defense, a conflict, as you know, with multiple causes. In Kenya, world-renowned paleontologist Richard Leakey, known for his fossil finding and conservation work, has died at the age of 77. The details and more in a feast of seconds. Stay tuned. We open in Sudan. Prime Minister resigns after violent pro-democracy protests and the death of at least two protesters killed by security forces during unrest in Khartoum and other cities. The details about this are given to us by Maria Batista Bina. Watch. Sudan Prime Minister has announced his resignation amid political deadlock and widespread pro-democracy protests following a military coup that derived the country's fragile transition to democratic rule. Abdallah Hamdok, a former UN official seen as the civilian face of Sudan transitional government, had been reinstated as prime minister in November as part of an agreement with the military following the October coup. In that time, he had failed to name a cabinet and his resignation on Sunday threw the country into political uncertainty once more. In a televised national address, he called for a dialogue to agree on a national charter and to draw a roadmap to complete the transition to democracy. The Prime Minister warned that the ongoing political stalemate since the military takeover could become a full-blown crisis and damage the country's already baited economy. The October coup upended Sudan's plan to move the democracy after a popular uprising force, the military overthrown of long-term autocrat Omar al-Bashir and his Islamist government in April 2019. Record that Hamdog resignation comes amid a heavy security crackdown on protesters denouncing the military's takeover and a subsequent deal that reinstated him and sidelined the pro-democracy movement. From politics to justice, in brief and images, this time the parliamentary complex in central Cape Town was devastated by fire on Sunday, January 2nd. South Africa has designated the structures as a historical site. The cause of the fire is unknown and it has sparked a lot of debate around the country. Authorities are unsure if it was an accident or a crime at this time and claim that the fire suppression devices, such as an automatic sprinkler system with closed valves, failed to prevent the incident. A 49-year-old guy has been arrested and will be presented in court on Tuesday. The environment page opens in Gabon. The electric fence is designed to prevent wild animals from leaving the forest to devastate farmers' fields. It is one of the solutions to the conflict between humans and elephants in the country, a conflict with multiple causes. Professor Lee White, Minister of Water and Forest and the Environment, discusses the situation in the country. Yana Kenenge tells us more. With a landscape covered at 80% by forest, Gabon, is experiencing an increasingly recurrent man-elephant conflict in the country. During an interview on December 31st, the Minister of Environment outlined some of the causes of this turf war. There is also a poaching aspect because today poachers are crossing our borders and hunting elephants in areas such as Minkebe that's pushing elephants towards the populations and there is also an increasing elephant population because of all our action of good environmental management. For five years, we have been implementing methods to manage these troubles. We went to Kenya to learn from a country that has much more experience than us in these matters, and we brought back the solution of electric fences, which works very well. The authorities are working hard to relieve the population and protect elephants, an animal species that is very important for the survival of forests and its biodiversity. During the National Conference on Conflict Management, several recommendations were suggested and made. Extending the program of construction of electric power plants, setting up a mechanism of rapid evaluation of the damages caused by this conflict, presenting the national strategy for an action plan and the road map to implement the mechanisms of alleviation and the procedure 
of administration of the administrative slaughter, taking a circular note giving precise orientations on the exercise of legitimate defense. Mitigating the conflict is the objective of the authorities at this time. In Gabon, as in the majority of countries suffering from conflict between humans and animals, it should be noted that climate change, poaching and habitat loss are also the main causes of human-wildlife conflict. Also in Kenya, world-renowned paleoanthropologist Richard Leakin, known for his fossil finding and conservation work, has died at 77. The announcement was made by Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta. Let's take a look. Leakey, whose groundbreaking discoveries helped prove that humanity evolved in Africa, remains energetic into his 70s despite bouts of skin cancer, kidney and liver disease. Born on December 19, 1944, he was destined for paleoanthropology, the study of the human fossil record, as the middle son of Louise and Mary Leakey, perhaps the world's most famous discoverers of ancestral hominids. Initially, he tried his hand at safari guiding, but things changed when at 23 he won a research grant from the National Geographic Society to dig on the shores of northern Kenya's Lake Turkana despite having no formal archaeological training. In the 1970s, he led expeditions that recalibrated the scientific understanding of human evolution with the discovery of the skulls of Homo habilis, 1.9 million years old, in 1972, and Homo erectus, 1.6 million years old, in 1975. A Time magazine cover followed him posing with a homo habilis mock-up under the headline, How Man Became Man. Then in 1981, his fame grew further when he fronted The Making of Mankind, a seven-part BBC television series. As the slaughter of African elephants reached a crescendo in the late 1980s, driven by insatiable demand for ivory, Leakey emerged as one of the world's leading voices against the then legal global ivory trade. That year, he engineered a spectacular publicity stunt by burning a pie of ivory, setting fire to 12 tons of tusk to make the point that they have no value once removed from elephants. From Kenya to Haiti, the 1st of January marks Haiti's Independence Day and many people in the country celebrate the occasion with Jumu soup, which has been cited as cultural heritage by UNESCO. Let's take a look at the story. This soup consists of a mix of meat, vegetables, pasta and the squash for which it is named. The custom started on January 1, 1804, the date of the independence of the country. Once a symbol of oppression, this dish has just been recognized by UNESCO as an intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Accordingly, the soup represents life and the power that the Haitians have conquered after years of fighting. Today it is an added value because of its appearance as intangible heritage in UNESCO. For some, this soup symbolizes freedom, love, union, fraternity, it is independent. Every time it is drunk, it gives a feeling of freedom. Haiti's Jumu soup is a tradition that dates back more than two centuries and is a way to honor the country and its past. We close this news edition in France. Starting this Monday, January 3rd, the deputies will examine the bill to transform the health pass into a vaccination pass. For the latest, Maria Battista Bina. Faced with a flare-up of the COVID-19 epidemic, the deputies are examining this 3rd January the bill transforming the health pass into a vaccination pass, the adoption of which is not in doubt despite a tense climate and the hostility of several parties. At the Palais Bourbon today, then in the Senate from Wednesday, the law strengthening the tools for managing the health crisis should come into force from January 15. These texts respond to the epidemic recovery in an effective, graduated manner. It makes the choice of science and responsibility, insists the Minister of Health Olivier Véran, while France has just passed the 200,000 new daily cases marked several times. To cope with this surge, the government wants to put even more pressure on the nearly 5 million French people 
over 12 years of age who are not vaccinated and who, because they cannot prove their vaccination status, will no longer have access to leisure activities, restaurants and bars, fair or inter-regional public transport. A negative test will no longer be sufficient except for access to health facilities and services. End of this news edition, but first let's review the main summary. In Gabon, electric fences is one of the solutions to the conflict between humans and elephants, a conflict, as you know, with multiple causes. Also in Kenya, world-renowned paleoanthropologist Richard Lakin, known for his fossil finding and conservation work, has died at the age of 77. We thank you for staying faithful to our channel and newscast. Information continues on G24 and our social media. Subscribe, share and follow. Happy New Year 2022 once more. And may God bless you all. Take care of yourselves and your families. It is also time to thank our news director, Richard Songoma, for the production of this news edition. Till then, goodbye.